Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good to see you, good to see you, good to be here today on this great day that the Lord has made. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Um, today, we just want to continue to ask you to stay safe, stay at home. Make sure you continue to do your best to be your best so that we can see that God will make sure that we make it through this pandemic together. So uh, we're just going to have, we're going to bless the Lord today. Uh, Derek and Angelique are ready to set us off in worship. So as they prepare to set us off in worship, let's just look to God. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for the opportunity of worship. Hallelujah. To be able to come together with each other, dear God, and to give your name the praise. God, even though we are not physically at the house, we thank you for the virtual means to worship together. And I thank you for Derek and Angelique leading us in worship for uh, Gregory and Armand doing the background, and also Michael Beasley and Shonda. And I just ask that you bless your people as we worship together. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Everyone, just say amen. 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 Hopefully you got your grape juice and hopefully you got your bread and crackers or whatever and you're ready for our communion later on. But right now, I'm going to turn it over to our praise and worship team. Oh, oh, oh. 
amazing God in this very uh, strange time still is amazing. Good morning, everybody. It's good to have you with us today. Good to be back in the opportunity of corporate worship again, even as we're corporately worshiping from various places. I want to welcome everyone who's joining us this morning by Instagram Live. I'm wearing it again. Facebook Live and everyone who's joining us on our uh, conference call. It's good to have you here this morning. Thanks to all of you behind the scenes folks who are making this happen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And we appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, one, uh, Our text this morning can be found in Mark, the eighth chapter, the eighth chapter of Mark. That's, that's, that's absolutely wrong. That's absolutely wrong. It's Mark, the 12th chapter, the 12th chapter of Mark, the 28th verse. To the 31st verse, Mark, the 12th chapter, verses 28 uh, through 31. While you're finding Mark, the 12th chapter, verses 28 through 31, hopefully you have your grape juice and your bread already. I'm going to be actually using the traditional communion. I started to bring in mine, but I was like, well, I'm here. I might as well uh, represent everybody by having the uh, communion cups that we have here. Also, I want to ask you to keep in your prayers, please, uh, Holly Page and Al Page. Uh, for losses in their family. Uh, and so we're just going to ask you to keep those, or both of them uh, had losses in their family. And so we ask that you keep them in your prayers. Also keep Pearlie Robinson in your prayers. Amen. We just ask that you continue to keep her in your prayers. And then continue to keep all of our family in your prayers right now. Amen. Amen. Hopefully you're making calls and you're checking in with folks. And so we're looking forward to it again. Our text this morning, Mark, the 12th chapter, verses 28 through 31. Amen. Amen. If you can hear me well, give me a thumbs up. Amen. Give me a thumbs up to make sure that you can hear me well while I grab a piece of paper. Amen. So church say amen. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, Jesus answered, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself yourself. The amazing thing about this is as Jesus gets ready to answer this teacher who's requesting an answer to this question, he starts by going to the foundation, the Shema in Deuteronomy 6. And he goes to the Shema and he says, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That was foundational for the Jew, for the Jews and for the Jewish community at that time. They recited that Shema at least twice a day. And so it was foundational. And he goes from there to begin to answer, the Lord, our God, is one. And he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is love your neighbor as you love yourself. Today, I want to share on a topic, on a subject, on a title, Love where you are. Last week we talked about uh, worship where you are. This week we're going to talk about love where you are. One of the scribes impressed by our Lord's skillful handling 
of the critics' questions asked Jesus, which is the most important commandment? It was an honest question. He was really asking for a concise statement of the chief aim of human existence. After three insincere questions that came before, uh, one that seems sincere, the basic foundation and basic function of this paragraph is to present clearly a central doctrine of early Gentile Christianity. Righteousness is not to be understood as a strict obedience to a complex code of laws and customs, but to adhere to a principle that threads itself through the church, the family, and the community of laws, customs, and commands. The one commandment that is central to this principle is love. The, the one commandment is central is love. By this, by this, by Jesus' time, the Jews had accumulated hundreds of laws, 613 to be exact. Some religious leaders tried to distinguish between major and minor laws, and some taught that all the laws were equally binding and that it is dangerous to make distinctions. The teacher's question could have provoked controversy among these groups, but Jesus' answer summarized all of God's laws into a single principle, which is love. If we are able to demonstrate love, we will complete all of the laws and all of the commands of the Bible. Some of us still struggle with that complex, that concept. He came with no apparent hostile or hidden motive to evaluate Jesus' skill in answering a much debated subject in scribal circles. Traditionally, the scribes spoke of 613 individual commandments of the Mosaic Law. 365 of those laws are negative, and the other 248 are positive ones. While they believed all were binding, they assumed a distinction between weightier, major, and lighter, minor, and often attempted to sum up the law in a single unifying command. They weren't able to do it, but Jesus did. That unifying command is love. And whether you're in your home right now, whether you're in your car right now, whether you are at work right now, wherever you are right now, if you would demonstrate the simple concept of love, it will begin to change whatever situation you're in. But we allow people to define love for us in the ways that are beneficial to them. We somehow have this tendency in our relationship with our churches and our families to think that there are better, you know, major and minor laws, that, that, that some commands are better, than, or that I do things that sins that I commit are, are, are small sins, but the sins that you commit are big sins. We act as if some sins are weightier and have greater spiritual infractions than others. Often we, iso we have isolated or even pained family members, our children, siblings, by putting one down for one wrong while granting other grace for another. We, well, believe it or not, our, our God is not that petty. I mean, our God is not like that, right? He doesn't put one of us down because we've done something and then the other one says, oh, well, forget about it. All of us are treated with the same love and respect. And if we treat our, each, each other, if we treat our children, if we treat our siblings, if we treat our families, our churchmen, if we treat everyone with that same level of compassion and love, I promise you, it will change the game. I wonder what life would be like if we followed God closely and adhered to the word of God as written and not the, the footnotes. You know, some of us like to read, to read the clip notes. We like to read the short part or the shorthanded version of the word of God. What would it feel like if not only uh, we were ju didn't judge each other unfairly, but what if we didn't judge each other at all? What if we allow God to be who God is, the supreme judge, and stop trying to be little bitty judges that keep everybody straight? Wouldn't it be nice if, we, if I were to walk in the footsteps of Jesus and resemble the godliness of a true believer in a way that would make God smile? 
bless my soul and win my neighbor, uplift my family, and bless us all. See, God's laws are not burdensome. They can be reduced to two simple principles, love God and love others. If we can stand on those foundations, we'll be much better people. These commands from the Old Testament, specifically Deuteronomy 6 and, and Leviticus 6, 5 and Leviticus 19, 18, when you love God completely and care for others as you care for yourself, then you have fulfilled the intent of the Ten Commandments. Summarize all of God's laws. Let them rule your thoughts and, and decisions and actions. When you are unclear about what to do, ask yourself the question. Which course of action best demonstrates my love for God and my love for others? When you're getting ready to make a decision or you're getting ready to make, ask yourself the question, which of my actions are going to demonstrate my love for God and my love for others? The first lesson we learn from this is love God where you are. The text says the most important one answer Jesus is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and with all of your mind and with all of your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The first lesson is to love where you are. I know that you love God at church, praise Jesus, but can you love God at home? Can you worship God at home? Can you act holy at home? You know, some of us, we save our holiness for when we get to church. We put on our holy capes as we leave out on Sunday morning and we come to church, praise the Lord, saints, but when we go home, we don't act so holy. And that impacts our, our relationship and it impacts our, our relationship with our family, our witness. Can you honor God, uh, honor the spirit of the living God at home where the TV is, where the kitchen is, where, where the phone is, Lord Jesus? Some of us, our phones are our biggest um, vice. We get on that phone and we talk about Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Love God where you are. Let your home be a place of God's abode. That's a place where God lives. And that, 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 that is, let God live in your home. Love God from where you are. Let God be praised in your home as God is in the church. Let the Lord live in your living room, on your couch, in the den, in the basement. Many of us put on that Christianity on our way out. But sheltering in place may mean more than cleaning dirt. It may mean cleaning up sin, sinful nature, and sinful acts. I'm not really trying to get all up into your house, amen. But does your religion, does your church, does your worship, does your life demonstrate you love God where you are? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, some of us, we saved that for the church, but now that we can't get into the house, we still have to be holy, and we still have to be loving, and we still have to exemplify the characteristics of God and stand on the principles of God, that principle of love, which will cover a multitude of sins according to the word of God. I want us to be blessed. I want this time while we're sheltering at home to mean something and to change how we relate to our God and how we deal with our God, and most importantly, how we love our God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Love him with the entirety of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. God is to have the supreme place in a man or woman's life. No other love can be allowed to rival the love for God. No one, nothing should ever rival your love for God. Everything you do. The first question you ought to ask is, does this demonstrate my love for God? And does this demonstrate my love for others? And if you begin to walk that principle, if you begin to love God with all that you are, it's going to change, change your life. I don't care who you are, how long you've been in the church, how long you've been a member, how long you've been worshiped, or how short, amen. You do, you do, you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
It will free you. And the Bible says that when you understand the word, you become free indeed. The second thing, the second lesson we learn from this text is to love where it love where you are. Love you. Love you where you are. If you don't love yourself, I don't care where you are, you're going to be tormented. If you don't love yourself, I don't care where you are, you're going to be tormented. Because where you are, you will always be. You can't run from yourself. The word says the most important one, Jesus answered, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The second is to love yourself where you are. Love you enough to take care of you. Love you enough to be able to do the things that benefit you. So many people will go against their own needs and desires to make everybody else feel good. And they go home and they don't feel good by themselves. We have nobody else to lean on now. We're at home, sheltering in place. And so who we have is, is we have ourselves. And we have our families. Let us be clear, you don't have to leave your home to get sick. You don't have to leave your home to die, and ultimately that's God's call, but you can take care of yourself and stay out of harm's way. You can love God and yourself by worshiping where you are, by loving God where you are, and by loving yourself where you are. Take some time during this shelter in place, during this pandemic, to learn to love yourself. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I promise you, if you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, he will give you the capacity to love yourself better than you've ever loved yourself before. Some of us still hate ourselves. I mean, it's, it's one thing to have some things about yourself that you want to change. I, I, we all have those, amen, praise God. And this would be a good time to work on those, amen, praise God. But during this, during this time, learn to love yourself. Treat yourself right. Eat, eat better. Amen. Praise God. Study your word more. Amen. Give yourself the ability to be the best you that you can possibly be. And not worry about what everybody else is thinking about you. Or how everybody else wants to judge you. And let's be real. How everybody wants to be you. Learn to love you for who you are. Learn to love you for who God has made you. Learn to love you through the eyes that God has given you to love. Love yourself through God's eyes. We talked about last Sunday the truth. We talked about the importance of worshiping God where you, where you are. You were created to worship. So worship God where you are. Since God loves you, you should love yourself. Studying God's word is a demonstration of your love for yourself and your love for God. And, 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 and when you read God's word, you understand why and how much God loves you, which can change your view of yourself. We keep viewing ourselves from Nana's eyes. We keep growing our, viewing ourselves from that last person we dated eyes. We keep viewing ourselves from the person who put us down. But well, we've got to start viewing ourselves and loving ourselves with the same eyes that God views us and loves us. Because God never gives up on us. God never forgets about us. He never turns away from us. He will never divorce us, leave us, or walk away from us. He says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Even until the end of the end. God is going to be there. So love the one who loves you. So that you can love you. And you can be everything God created you to be. Love where you are. Love you where you are. The Holy Spirit will guide us and, 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 and to being what all that we uh, can be so we can develop the necessary relationships, especially now. While you're in lockdown, shut down, sheltering in place, whatever you want to call it, take this time to invest in you. And invest in your relationship with the almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing God. And I promise you, you'll thank yourself when this is over. You'll thank yourself for the investment that you made. You might even thank me for reminding you. But ultimately, you'll thank God for his favor, his mercy, and his grace.
The third thing the text teaches us is to love others from where you are. The most important one, the text says, add to Jesus is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. The third lesson is love others where you are. The other half of the Ten Commandments teaches us to love our neighbor and ourselves. Jesus constantly says, love one another, bear one another's burdens, take care of one another, be with one another, celebrate each other's joys. We are to love God more than ourselves and our neighbors as ourselves. That's the life that really counts is concerned first with God and then with others. Notice that material things are not mentioned here. God is important. People are important. Material teams, they're not alive. They're not going with you into eternity. They're just some things that we have down here that we use to make ourselves feel good. Amen. I mean, the clothes we put on, they make us feel good. The food that we eat, it makes us feel good. I mean, it would be nice if we ate food for living instead of living to eat. But amen, amen. The fact of the matter is that all the material, we buy the car, we buy, we want to feel good. We buy the house, we buy, we want to feel good. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is to give our best to our God and be our best for our God. First of all, take care of yourself. Understand that God is important and people are, are important. And, and so nothing makes you feel more important than loving God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. First of all, take care of yourself. <coughs> In this pandemic, you can love others by staying at home. You, 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 if you take care of yourself, it, it'll, it'll bless you, it'll bless your mother, it'll bless your spouse and your children, and, 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 and all. But second, it keeps you out of the way of others. So when you go out, let us love others by wearing our mask. Let us love others by taking seriously. Asymptomatic people can pass this. Even if you have no symptoms, you can actually have this and carry it and pass it on to somebody else who will get sick as a dog. So learn to love yourself enough to take care of yourself and love others enough to take care of yourself so that you can be a blessing to others as opposed to a detriment. Man, I could sit here today and tell you story after story about people who thought they did not have nothing but brought it home to their families who got sick. So let us be responsible in this time to learn to love ourselves and to love God and to learn others. There are many ways for us to love others where you are. Call someone you haven't spoken to in months or years. You got some folks you haven't spoken to, they haven't heard from you. Show off your Christianity. Show off your Christian character. Show off your humility and your love and your kindness and your joy and your peace. You ain't got to remind them of old differences, old offenses. Things that made you mad, it's time for us to let go of some stuff. Amen. If you can't do nothing else, let go of some stuff. Stop. Reach out to some people who haven't heard from you in months. Be the bigger person, y'all. The sanctified person, the Christian person, the loving person. People always say, well, why I got to be the bigger person? Because you have the bigger God. Hallelujah. God is a blessing to us. God is continuing to guide us and to lead us and to give us blessings. Don't you want to be bigger? Amen. Who wants to be petty when we got a big old God who's taking care of us and blessing us and granting us grace and mercy and favor? But we want to be petty? Learn from where you are. Share some time with someone you've been ducking. Somebody you've been ducking in your whole in your own house. I mean, you spent, but you haven't been real with them. You haven't communicated with them. That somebody might be yourself. Yeah, grant your love to God, to yourself and to others. Share with someone during this time. Stop ducking. Uh, uh, send a card to someone who needs cheer. If, if you don't have anyone to, to love, let me know. I got some people you can love on. 
I have family and friends who lost loved ones in New York and, and in Detroit and, and in New Orleans and in Chicago and in Boston. I got some people who are sick right now in Detroit and in New York and Chicago and Boston and New Orleans. I got some people right here in Cleveland who can use your card, who can use your call, who can use your care. We learn to love somebody else. I emailed you 10 things that you can do while you're sheltering in place. The title is Being the Church While Unable to Gather in the Building. And if you didn't get an email and you want it, you can inbox me, you can email me, you can text me, you can call me, we can get you a copy. But there's 10 things that suggest, it says commit to checking on five family and friends. Five members of your church. You know, we got some people who literally live at home by themselves. Right? And they, they don't have anybody to talk to all day. Boy, that would be a way to share love. You can use the app that you have to help those in need. You, you can buy gift cards for those who are in need or, or maybe support a small business that you like and love. Use your digital influence to let friends and neighbors know that you're available to help. If you're online right now, you can, you can bless somebody online. Every week we post our information. Every week we, we share our cash app. You can bless the church, amen. But you might be, want to share your digital influence with other people. There are some people who are, uh, pay attention to those who cry out for help online. There are some folks who are online. I promise you they're crying out for help. I promise you they're crying out for help. But I was online yesterday, and I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw some people who just needed help because they post all of their stuff on Facebook. That, that means they have nobody else to talk to, and so they need somebody to reach out to them and to share with them. And I ain't gonna lie, you don't have to always call everybody or text everybody. You can sometimes just pray for them. That's what I do. When I see something that looks like it, I start praying for folks. But some of them will call your attention, and you need to call somebody. You need to talk to somebody. You need to live. pay attention to what people are dealing through. Share positivity. There's so much negativity now. Don't be the one who always talk about Trump. Be the one who talk about Jesus. I mean, I'm just saying, who is your guy, Jesus or Trump? Some of us talk about Trump more than we talk about Jesus. And it's time for us to start talking about who God is in this pandemic and what God is going to do. Because we're clear, <laughs> your boy ain't going to do nothing. Your social influence to advocate for the causes or, or share helpful information with somebody. Clean out your house and see if you've got some extra material that you can give to somebody who sews so they can make some masks. Clean out your house. Everybody's looking for little elastic pieces to put on. You might have some elastic stuck down there somewhere. But share positivity. Share your influence to advocate for causes that you believe in. Make sure everybody, call and make sure everybody's done their census. Make sure, make sure we get out and vote this time. Amen. 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 You, you engage in a digital door knocking. Check in on people. See how they do it. Create an opportunity for prayer. You can pray online. I mean, seriously, some of y'all, with all the stuff you type online, it wouldn't hurt you to type a prayer. In fact, get the Bible. Type some scripture online. Even the skeptical may long for someone who cared enough to pray for them, to spend some time with them, or share scripture with them. For a lot of people, y'all, right now, it's a very difficult time. Because for a lot of people, they don't know where to turn. You do. You know that God is good all the time. You know that God has created an opportunity for us to experience his mercy and his grace. His favor and his blessings. Blessings on blessings on blessings. So be a blessing. You know, I used to always tell people, be blessed and be a blessing. That means connect with God and share with others. That means love God and love others. And I promise you, if you begin to love God and love others, you'll learn how to love yourself. I'm sorry, some of us don't know how to love ourselves, and I'm, I'm praying for you today because I want us to be able to love ourselves. And I promise you, you can't love yourself. I don't know how nobody else can love you. I'll say it again, and some of you didn't hear it earlier. God is no mean human. He doesn't tell lies or change his mind. God always keeps his promises. That's from Numbers 2, 19. 
And 1 Samuel 15, 29 says, Besides, the eternal God of Israel isn't a human being. He doesn't tell lies or change his mind. Amen. God is always true. He's always present. God is always on your side, working on your behalf, claiming your victories and building you up to be victorious. Running your races and giving you strength to run the race. Or perhaps carrying you when necessary and making sure you get across the finish line. God is a loving parent. And like any other parent, our way of demonstrating our love is not simply found in Mother's Day gifts. Though we love them, they are simply found in Father's Day gifts. Father's Day gifts, though they're treasured and appreciated. But a child demonstrates his or her love for a mom and dad by being obedient, by doing the things that they teach, doing the things that they share, doing the things that make them stronger. Do you love God enough to obey the word of God, the will of God, and the voice of God? Love God enough to not only show your honor and obedience, but to prove it? Prove it in a way that, 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 that actually lets God know how much you love him? I mean, not, not proving to me or to your friends or to your enemies. Some of us spend so much time trying to prove who we are to the people who hate us. They don't like us. They don't even care about us. But they're always challenging us. What about proving your love to the God who loves you, who created you, who made you unique and wonderfully made, specific and special? The God who breathes life into your lungs every day. The God who makes make sure that the blood runs warm through your veins. The God who woke you up this morning, the God who fills you with his presence, that's the one you should be trying to prove your love to. Not to somebody who's coming and going. So here you here one day, gone tomorrow. But the God who created you and breathes life into you. Demonstrate your love to God, the creator of heaven and earth, God, the healer of the land and of its people and, and the woes of the land. Love your God with all, by loving yourself and by loving others and by loving God and honoring God and obeying God. And watch your life elevate to a point that your enemies will be your footstools, your haters will be your risers, and, 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 and those who taunted you will become those who they celebrate you. They're going to become your cheerleaders and they won't even know why they're cheering for you. But God, but God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask and or imagine. God is just that good, just that loving, just that thoughtful, just that kind, just that expressive, just that creative, just that unique, just that reasonable, just ready to bless you, just ready to give you favor, just ready to give you a life that you can enjoy and be pleased with. Life with blessings on blessings. When you love God, you can love yourself. When you love God, that you recognize that you're lovable. You can love God from where you are. You can love you from where you are. You can love others from where you are. Because once you learn to love God, he'll give you the capacity to love everyone else. Then one of the scribes, an expert in the Mosaic Law, came up and listened to them arguing with one another and noticing that Jesus answered them well he asked which commandment is the first and most important of all Jesus answered the first and most important one is hear O Israel the Lord our God is one God and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul that's your life with all your mind that's your thoughts and understanding with all your strength. This is the second. You shall unselfishly, hallelujah, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Today I want to challenge you to love from where you are. Love deeply. Love for real. Love in a way that changes lives, impacts lives, and will change people who are dealing with this pandemic in a very negative way. You're in a very great position today because you have a very great God who cares for you every single day. And that gives you an advantage. And so today, if you've never accepted Jesus, I hope that you would today. And, and, and I'm going to tell you this, if you're not a member of a church, you can still join the church in the midst of the pandemic. 
You can still become, we, we have a couple of people now who are coming to be a part. They've never been here, hallelujah. But they want to be a part of this ministry. Because what they understand is that God is good regardless to where you are. And as much as you can worship God from where you are, you can love him, yourself, and others from where you are. If you've never accepted Jesus and you want to accept Jesus today, I just ask that you'll pray with me right now. You just say, Lord God, I am your child created by you. Lord, I need you to forgive me of my sins. Today I confess that you are Lord. And today I believe in my heart that God has risen you from the dead. And so today I ask you to be my Lord and my God. And I accept you as my Savior. And then thank you, God, for saving me today. says if you believe in your heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead and you confess it with your mouth then you shall be saved if you believe it and you confess it you're saved if you want once we open up you can come and get baptized amen which is a, 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 a simple and a public expression of what you accept in your heart but if you accept Jesus today you're saved if you believe in your heart today you're saved you confess it with your mouth today you're saved If you, if you pray this prayer today and you want, just email me, pastorquincy at gmail.com. And just say, Pastor Quincy, today I accepted Jesus Christ. And I thank him for being my Lord. We're going to prepare today for communion. Uh, I'm going to ask you to go and get you uh, your grape juice and your bread or whatever it is that you need. These elements, we're going to pray for them because these elements represent who God is in our lives. Amen. Also, remember to keep holy page and our page, our page and holy page in your prayers. Continue to keep making your prayers. God bless you. And continue to keep each other in your prayers. Also continue to keep Pearly Robertson in your prayers. Let's pray together. Almighty gracious God, we come today to celebrate communion, which is the coming together with you and with your people. We ask you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, as we take this communion today, that we'll acknowledge who you are. So God, I ask that you will bless the elements. Some people are in their homes, they just have a piece of bread. Some people have crackers. Some people, God, may have even a breadstick, or somebody might just have a cookie. But whatever they have, God, I ask that you'll bless it as it represents your body, which is given for us. And whether they're drinking grape juice or some other kind of juice or, or Gatorade, God, I ask that you'll bless the elements that they might be used to represent the remission of sin, which is given by the covenant of your blood that that drink will become your blood. And that, God, we will learn to forgive others, to let go of all of the pain that they have caused us. That, God, we will learn to love others, to love you, to love ourselves. God, I pray today that you'll bless the Page family. Bless Al, God, in a very special way. Bless Holy in a very special, special way. Strengthen their family in this time. So many families who lost loved ones all around the world. We're asking for you to touch their hearts, God, in a way that only you can. We pray, Lord Jesus, for a couple on Filbert Street. We ask you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to bless all of the individuals in our church who are sick or who are in nursing homes by themselves. We ask for your protection of everyone in the nursing homes and rehabilitation centers. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Teach us to be more like you and allow us to stand firm. We lift up Pearlie Robinson and we ask for your continued blessings upon Brandy's pen and, 
and Daryl Lee. God, we just ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, to have your way in our midst. And so, God, as we partake of this bread and of this cup, we do so because we love you and we desire you and we need you. I ask for your blessings upon every member of Leroy Baptist Church, every member who's represented by their love for you. And God, I pray for everyone who's watching us, who's worshiping with us, and who's experiencing God with us today. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. In the name of our heart, say amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took a simple loaf of bread and he broke it. He said, this represents my body. This is my body which is given for you. As often as you eat of this bread, won't you remember the sacrifice that he gave in his body? Eat and remember Jesus. In a similar manner, he took the cup. He said, this right here, it represents the new covenant I make with you. When I shed my blood and give my life, is that you might have a better life. Often as you drink of this cup, do some remembrance of me. Drink and remember Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. And we're thankful to have a God. And so, Derek and Angelique, I'm going to share with us as we head out today. But again, I hope that you would, if you don't have our sheet, which is being the church while unable to gather in the building, please let me know. We'll get you a copy. And if you know someone who's not able to meet with us on social media or on the phone, please make sure you let us know. We have recorded copies of the worship as well. I'm so grateful to God today for you the opportunity to be here with you today. I'm praying for you and for your family. I'm praying that you will experience all that God has for you. And I want to say thank you to all of these, for these four guys and four people who are with me in this sanctuary today. So I'm going to give them a moment to worship and to lead us in worship and to share with us in worship.